Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. One of the most important lists in QuickBooks is the Chart of Accounts. To open this list, select Lists, Chart of Accounts from the menu bar. The Chart of Accounts lists all the accounts in your company file. These accounts track all incoming and outgoing money and tell you how much you currently own and owe. When you set up your business in QuickBooks, you get a default list of accounts. Once that has been done, you will probably need to make some changes. You can add, edit, inactivate, delete, and rename accounts in this list. Generally, you can perform any of these tasks by first selecting the account within the chart of accounts you want to change. Then click the Account button in the lower left corner of the chart of accounts window and select the desired command to perform from the pop-up menu that appears. Conveniently, in any list that you can open by choosing the Lists command in the menu bar, you can always click the button in the lower left corner of the list window to perform the basic list-related tasks. This button is always named the same thing as the list within which it appears. For example, you click the Account button to perform list management in the Chart of Accounts window, you click the Item button when using the Item list, and so on. To illustrate, assume that you wanted to add a new savings account to your Chart of Accounts. To add a new account, select Lists then Chart of Accounts from the menu bar or press Ctrl plus A on your keyboard to open the list. Next, click the Account button in the lower left corner of the Chart of Accounts window and choose the New command from the pop-up menu that appears. Doing this then opens the Add New Account, Choose Account Type window where you enter the new account information. First, select the account type from the account options shown. Technically, a savings account is an asset. However, in QuickBooks, when working with asset accounts that have a cash basis, like checking, savings, petty cash, and others, you will want to assign the account as a bank account type to note its cash nature and be able to use it within transaction windows. After selecting the desired account type, click the Continue button to move to the next screen. You will then see the Add New Account window. Note that when you selected the account type on the previous screen and then clicked the Continue button, all it did was select an account type from the account type drop-down shown at the top of this window. Next, enter a name for the account into the account name box. For now, skip the sub-account of checkbox and drop-down as we will discuss creating sub-accounts momentarily and we will assume that the account being created is not a sub-account of any other main account. The account description field is optional, as are the bank account number, routing number, and tax line mapping fields. When finished, click the Save and Close button to create the new account and close the new account window. Alternatively, to continue creating new accounts without closing and reopening the new account window, click the Save and New button instead. Doing this creates the account and clears the new account window, but leaves the window open so you can continue creating accounts. If you choose to do this, note that this time you need to select the account type for the next account to create from the account type drop-down at the top of the window. Also note that you can click the Cancel button to close the new account window without creating an account if needed. To create an account that had a balance as of the company file's start date, you can click the Enter Opening Balance button within the Add New Account window. Doing this will open the Enter Opening Balance window where you can enter the amount, as of the start date of your company file, into the Statement Ending Balance field. Then select the Statement Date, which must be either before or as of the start date of the company file from the Statement Ending Date calendar selector. Then click the OK button to save the account's opening balance. The amounts entered here are attributed to the opening BAL equity account in the chart of accounts. Note that for accounts created after the company file start date, you simply create the account and then enter the transactions that show from where the new account received its initial funds. When creating accounts, you will not need to use the opening balance field again after creating your beginning account balances when initially starting your company file. You can also create sub-accounts of accounts already created within the chart of accounts. This allows you to attribute transaction amounts to specific sub-accounts of a primary account for reporting purposes. 
For example, if you had an automobile expense account, you could create sub-accounts for gas and maintenance slash repairs to easily show within a report the different amounts spent on gas versus repairs and maintenance for company vehicles, as well as the total amount spent on automobile expenses. The balance of any main account that has sub-accounts is the total of all transactions attributed to the main account, including all balances within its sub-accounts. You create sub-accounts the same way you create any other account. However, first ensure that you have created the main account for which to create the sub-accounts. The only difference when creating a sub-account versus a primary account is that you must check the sub-account of checkbox and then choose its primary account from the adjacent drop-down menu. Note that sub-accounts must always also be of the exact same account type as their parent accounts. To filter the chart of accounts, if using QuickBooks Pro 2018 or later, type the account name or number defined into the Look for Account Name or Number field at the top of the Chart of Accounts window. Then click the Adjacent Search button or press the Enter key on your keyboard to filter the account list to show only matching accounts. To show all accounts again, click the Reset button. To edit an account, select the account to edit in the Chart of Accounts. Then click the Account button in the lower left corner of the List window and choose the Edit Account command from the pop-up menu that appears. Alternatively, you can also right-click the account to edit within the Chart of Accounts window and then select the Edit Account command from the pop-up menu that appears. Either way, you will then see the Edit Account window appear. Edit the account information in this window, and then click the Save and Close button to save your changes and close the window. You may also have accounts you never use in your default chart of accounts. You can only delete accounts if there are no transactions associated with the account. After transactions are assigned to an account, you can no longer delete it as that would compromise your company's financial information. In that case, you must first remove the transactions from the account, either by reassigning each transaction in the account to other accounts, or by deleting them entirely if they are incorrect. However, this may not be feasible for your situation. After there are no transactions in the account, then you can delete it. To delete an empty account within the Chart of Accounts window, select the account, and then click the Account button in the lower left corner of the Chart of Accounts window. Choose the Delete Account command from the pop-up menu that appears. Then click the OK button in the message box that appears to delete the selected account. If you have an account you used at one time in the past but no longer actively use, you can inactivate it to hide it since you cannot delete it. When an account is inactivated, it will not appear by default in your chart of accounts. However, the account information is retained for reporting in QuickBooks. You can actually make items in almost all of your lists inactive to hide items you no longer use. In the chart of accounts, you can inactivate an account by selecting the name of the account, clicking the account button in the lower left corner of the list window, and then selecting the make account inactive command from the pop-up menu. Inactivating list items will be covered in depth in Lesson 3.8. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.